we've been very blessed over the last four years that I've been here that we have two Stanley Cup champions. We've had six playoff games in four days. So this is kind of the icing on the cake for us. This kind of breaks up the season. It's right in the middle of February. Uh, it gets us going for the second half of the season with three teams here, since we are the only venue that has three professional teams, plus all the concerts. So this kind of is a good break for us. It kind of rejuvenates us, gets us going. And uh, I hope you enjoy the food today, later. Uh, we accept the menu. We do, as a chef's team. Yeah, we come together. We, uh, we start prepping all the food, we taste it, we go back, we taste it again, go back. So this process really started about September. How many plates do you serve? How many people well, do you serve? For it, it's so, it varies. So for sweets, we serve about 1,800 people. Um, we have a party upstairs that's another 1,000 people, VIPs. We do a little bit in the concession area. We feed all the, the crew that we do crew meals for a thousand. You know, starting Thursday and Friday, it's really ramped up. Um, so, you know, there's about 18,000 people this venue sits. And we got 18,000 food critics coming through here. So, is yeah. this by far the largest amount of food that you serve throughout the, the year? You know, it rivals it rivals uh, Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, because. Uh, in the Stanley Cup Finals, the concessions area of our building is a lot more busy than Grammys. When you put the menu together, you try to understand everybody's needs. You try to think, okay, what would people might like? Is there certain cooking methods that it involves so that we can meet certain needs? Um, you try to take that all into account and try to hit every kind of food group, if you will. Um, so it's, but like to your, it's everything. I mean, Nothing really sticks out anymore. What kind of comments do you get back from the stars? And stars are uh, more backstage. They're having a great time. So they're usually enjoying themselves a lot. We just really focus on the suite member. We try to touch as many suites as possible, the VIP parties. And we usually get rave reviews for that because we put a lot of dedication, hard work, time, and effort into this. Um, we take it very seriously. So it, it's something that we have a lot of pride in. How's the menu varied from year to year? It, it, you know, it just, it's great. It, it, we can kind of see the evolution of our cooking staff and, and we try to stay ahead of the trends. We try to stay something unique and different from prior years. So we always try to reinvent the wheel. Not so much as, as how we prepare the food, but a unique experience that we can give to the guests. So this year differs um, drastically from last year by just some cooking methods, some of the ingredients we're using. Is different. But this is uh, BB Restaurants working with AEG, our building staple center, coming up with the best possible meal. I kind of cut my teeth with the Ritz Carlton all over the country, and then uh, you know I just started working my way up to become chef here. And a year later, he calls me. He goes, "Would you like to come back home?" They gave me a tour of it. I saw the Lakers play when they're winning championships. So I said, oh yeah, I guess so. As executive chef here. And I've worked with the company for 10 years. So you're a Pasadena product, huh? Pasadena. All St. Right. Francis High School. Oh. Not on any menu. It's just for the Grammys. And what was it, what inspired this for the... Chef, is this one of your specialty well, items? This was. You know, I wanted to take the, the freshness of the hot tuna, which is served rare. And mix it with like a, because my favorite sandwich is a BLT. So I want to kind of enhance it a little bit. So we added a little bit of ahi tuna to it. So it's very unique with the butter brioche bun and the coleslaw. It makes for a refreshing sandwich. We did a play on um, a caviar dish. So the idea with this is bacon infused like smoky caviar that we made creme fraiche. We have a little microgreens so you could stir it up and you put it on sweet potato chips. So I thought that was unique, because has anybody tried bacon infused caviar? Yeah, yeah, so that's something unique that I think we, we brought. And then, you know, I, I forget who I was talking to, but when, when the ladies and gentlemen come to the event, they're wearing nice outfits and stuff, so we try to do as much possible that it'll be small plates or small appetizers so nobody makes a mess of their, their clothes. So next we have this like meze platter, which we have baba ganoush, hummus, um, like a feta salad, artichoke and basil dip, tzatziki, and some marinated olives with pita chips, some kind of date and, and fig bread, uh, lavash, breadsticks, so that they can build a little plate and just take little bites as they watch the, the music. 
in the event. Um, Faro salad, which is great, it has uh, like cellar vegetables inside. So we really kind of, it's a winter vegetable side of it. Topped with Carmody cheese is one of the best cheeses we have in Northern California, in my opinion. Um, the Scottish salmon, which you saw was preparing downstairs with pickled uh, Persian cucumbers, a little watermelon radish, a Dutch yellow potato salad on bottom. They're micro vegetables where you can just take one bite of it and a herb yogurt sauce. Uh, this is probably the thing that I got, one of my favorite parts of New Orleans. I'm a big fan of New Orleans. Um, so we did bacon wrapped or uh, like a new cheese wrapped prawns with um, cheddar grits and then a Worcestershire sauce on top. So I think this is really neat because it's a kind of a wow item with the, we use U8 shrimps. So the shrimps are, are huge. What's uh, U8 mean? So if you ever go to the store and you see like a 2125 shrimp or 2630, it's really how many go in a pound. So that's a count for the return. So these are the uh, potatoes that are smoked potatoes with our beef tenderloin, a little bit of uh, sage, and then the demi glaze, served with like a green um, green garlic aioli, ahi uh, BLT, which we saw downstairs, uh, red quinoa with a little bit of beets tossed in, Sonoma goat cheese and arugula, so it's kind of build your own salad. <coughs> the buttermilk panna cotta, which you saw downstairs, which is candied like squash and then basil oil around. This is what we call a rock and pop board. So we have our country pate, Mount Tam cheese, a little bit of salumis, two different types, um, olives, apricot jams, a brie, triple king brie, some honeycomb, and we pickle our own vegetables here. Is a pate made in house? Yes. So everything you, you, you kind of see here is um, Again, like just noshing and, and having somebody who can build their own plates and go around and not worrying about a knife and fork so much. Yeah. There's some items that we do have to do knife and fork, but I try to limit those as much as possible so people can. We still want people to eat because I, I have a feeling they're going to be drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. And it's and, and this is another addition. So we have our all about the sushi play on the words there. Uh, we have. Uh, we did a special shrimp tempura roll, lobster, actually lobster roll, with a little bit of mango salsa on top, shrimp tempura, spicy tuna, California, and then vegetable roll. And then we have the Vietnamese spring rolls with the sweet chili sauce and a little bit of the Thai red curry What's in it? Vietnamese So it's cucumbers, avocado, cabbage, um, and carrots. And what about the sweets? This is this is all for the sweets. No, the sweets oh. themselves. Oh yeah, sweets. <laughs> the sweet sweets. You got me there. <laughs> so we wanted to do something unique this year for the sweets. So we actually worked with one of our partners, Vos Chocolate, to create this uh, kind of unique encyclopedia box set. They call it. So there's going to be all different kinds of chocolate inside, and the actual ones that we receive from them, which are coming in today will be glow in the dark and be logoed with the Grammys, 57th Grammy Very cool. Awards. And along to go with that, we're going to have some specialty candies. If you, if you really like cherries and chocolate, try these. They're chocolate um, cherries dipped in chocolate. Uh, we have some candy bags. These are going to be in the sweets, Grammy cookies. And then we have some great macaroons, mini cupcakes, uh, banana fanciers, and then uh, mini cookies. Just a little bit of of treats to go along with uh, your specialty meal. We do not make these. And we, we, we get those from a, she won a Cupcake Wars, I think Hot about cakes. four years ago. Hotcakes, Hot yeah. Hot yeah. So Elfie, yeah. I can't wait. We're rocking and rolling here. Grammys Sunday, February 8th. And uh, we'll have fun. I hope you do too. Fantastic. Sample this fabulous food. The creator is right here. Yes, can't wait. You ready? I'm ready. Look, let's look at the food. It's time to rock and roll. And there you have a picture of it. Yes, right. of Got a little of bit of everything here. Yeah, I have to try a little That's bit of everything. So there you have it. This is Gary G, the Inland Valley News and Chef Joseph.